Hey everyone, it's Chad. Welcome back. In a previous episode, we expanded the memory of the Candy Color Computer 3. I've got the Coco 3 out again, and it's time to continue the upgrades. Today, we're going to replace all of the electrolytic capacitors, and then the CPU. Let's go! One popular upgrade for the Coco is replacing the Motorola 6809 with a Hitachi 6309E. The Hitachi 6309E is a remarkable feat of engineering. It not only doubles the number of transistors, which typically means more processing power, but it also manages to do so while operating at a cooler temperature. The CPU boasts a native mode that, when enabled, offers faster speeds and an additional multiply and divide instructions. Some software in the Nitro OS 9 operating system use these to their advantage. While I'm at it, I'll also replace all of the electrolytic capacitors on the board, because they're almost 40 years old and why not? The process for doing this is pretty straightforward, but time consuming. Each capacitor is removed one at a time, and the through holes are cleared of old solder. The replacement capacitor of identical capacitance and, at minimum, similar voltage is identified and selected from the bundle. Ensuring the polarity of the capacitor is correct is crucial. Electrolytic capacitors have a positive and negative side. The lead closest to the gray stripe of the capacitor with dashes is the negative side. On this main board, the silk screen indicators for capacitor locations have a circle and a dot. The dot on the board indicates the positive side. As I was placing each capacitor, I made sure that the stripe was not on the same side of the dot. There is one capacitor in this kit that is not polarized and it can be installed either way. I work my way through every capacitor on the board until this is complete. Let's put the computer back together and perform the magic smoke test. Moment of truth. If I had installed any of the capacitors backwards, this test would have immediately let me know, probably with a bang, and then some of the magic smoke would be released from its bound state. With all that out of the way, it's time to move on to the next step, replacing the CPU. I'm often asked, do you have a soldering pump gun? The answer is yes, but I really don't care for it. But I'll use it here so I can be just like all the cool kids. I've gone over each pin and tried to suck out the solder, but some still remains. It should be simple. Heat the pin, pull the trigger, and on to the next. However, I'm still gonna need to use the old trusty standby. Flux, desoldering braid, and patience. I've used this trick many times before, and here it comes to the rescue. I have a zip tie that is pretty thin, and I can stick it underneath the chip. As I heat up each pin on the chip, I can stick the zip tie a little bit further underneath the chip, and slightly wedge it in there. Now with the zip ties wedged underneath the CPU, I can apply traction to the zip ties while heating, and it comes right out. I'll spend some time cleaning up around the holes. However, this does come back to bite me later. After that, I put in a new CPU socket and then solder each pin to the board. Now it's time to put in the new CPU, reassemble the machine, and test it out. When I first turned it on, I only got a green screen, which was very disappointing. So I plugged in the diagnostics cartridge, and it appeared to work. I hit the B key here to load up the basic ROM, and that is the only time that the keyboard worked. Unsure what else to do, I got out my multimeter and began testing for continuity from each pin, testing all 40 pins. Everything worked. I pulled out the new CPU and put back in the old CPU. The results were the same, just a green screen. I researched the problem, which led me to discover that if I touch pins 2 and 12 together on the keyboard contact, 
that should give me the letter K. Pressing K in this way with the diagnostic cartridge did nothing. I was now concerned that I had somehow destroyed the keyboard's logic chip. I was very sad, had given up, and was just staring at my mistake, pitying the situation that I was in. Then I spotted this. I took a picture of it just in case. I used the tip of my logic probe to dig it out. I pressed the power button with no cartridge in the slot and was presented with BASIC! Could you believe that this tiny little speck of copper could stop this mighty machine from starting and almost foiled my plans for creating a successful upgrade video? Well, now that I've got the new CPU in, what can I do? How about a game? Thank you.